Uh, thank you. Hello, everyone. So yeah, I will be talking about uh, evaluation, this is the work that we did and the framework that we created for evaluation of different machine translation engines. Couple of words where we're coming from. So uh, I, my colleague Sahil also here in the room. We work in a company called Optum, so it's a, a big healthcare organization, and we are working a team that uh, basically uh, build uh, work with innovation inside the, inside the company. So we try to basically de risk different mach machine learning technology and like make them usable for the broader organization. And uh, uh, part of uh, like one of the works that we did was around machine translation. So machine translation is basically a task of converting text from automatically converting text from one language to another. It has a, a lot of application in a big enterprise. So it can be like a machine translation when people just translate, I don't know, some text just to communicate with each other, or it may be some large scale batch translation when we translate a lot of uh, like uh, marketing materials to other languages or our product to other languages and so on. Or it can be like part of chatbot. Uh, uh, so our goal was to understand what uh, uh, technology is available out there, what we can use, what the quality wise it look like. And uh, because we work in uh, like healthcare domain, uh, machine translation are usually like common models are usually fine tuned for like like general the domain of text, our text are more specific. So the next question was like, uh, uh, what will work better like on our type of data? And just brief overview. So machine translations, uh, why basically we're doing it? Because machine translation is a hugely evolving field. There was like, it comes through several stages, but uh, for, for recent years with all the development in, you know, like, like deep learning models, multilingual models, it, uh, get a huge boost. So the new models coming up like each year, each each month, even, even. So it was important to us to have a framework in place that will allow us to test new models as soon as they can come in and compare it with our previous models. And uh, just to give you perspective, the huge is, uh, as the field is, is huge. So if you want machine translation, there's a lot of like different models available. So there's a lot of things to come uh, to, to choose from. And uh, that's why it's, it's important to, to like be able to evaluate them between each other, to choose the best one. So as I said, basically our goal was to develop a framework that allow us to choose our own data sets, to, to choose uh, uh, different engines and different type of machine translation engines and compare them with, between each other on different metrics and basically see how well they perform. And to be able to have this framework that we can basically rerun frequently, adding new models, adding maybe new data sets and so on. Uh, a little bit about implementation details, so what we did so f first one is like uh, my, my personal like uh, problem is the language. So we work with machine translation. We not need to know like what language we're working on, like from what language to what language we want to translate. And example here, it's uh, three models from Facebook uh, made by the same team, like uh, each one like, a year apart. And uh, uh, to set the language, they like for each model they use the new like type of the language. So it's a, it's a e -N -E -E -X -X, e -N, e -N Latin, and so on. And if you like start you know, going deeper, it's actually more complicated because like there's a lot of English languages that we treat the same, but then Portuguese in Portugal and Portuguese in Brazil is probably different languages. Uh, Chinese languages are Definitely, like there's two different languages actually. Uh, so the problem is like how we can uh, understand them if you work with different engines. And I saw like a lot of examples when people just do like get first two letters and lowercase. So please don't do this; it doesn't work. Uh, like luckily, there's P 
people over there who not only complaining like me about the problem, but do something about it. So there's a library called LangCodes that solves it for you. And the way we use it, uh, again, we try not to think more about what language people pass to us. Uh, we just like, we have a model that have some, some a list of supported languages in whatever format they prefer. We have a language that like uh, we want to evaluate. So we just write the functions that find the closest language and then just use it. Uh, uh, next piece is the actual translation engines. So when people talk, think about translations, they usually think about in terms of like, we have a, like a string, we translate the strings, that is, that's it. But if you need to translate a large of amount of data, and especially if you want to do it for evaluation purposes, uh, there's a lot of more stuff to do. So you need to like parse the file, uh, you need to uh, skip text that was already translated before, because again, it may be a long process that may fail at some point. So you want to like uh, restart not from the beginning, but uh, from the point where you don't have translation. You need to clean up the text. You need to do sentence separation properly if you like, if your text is not sentence separated. Then you need to split it to batches then your engine come in and, and translates the text, and then you need to put it back together, maintain the uh, order of the lines, and catch errors if there are any, and again, like, translation of, like, huge batch translation may take a lot of time, so we want to catch errors, just output them and not stop the whole process, because it was, like, really annoying when you, like, in the morning check your batch script and it just falls so, so sometimes. Uh, so to support all this, now what we did, we actually created a like uh, base translator class that take care of all the all of this stuff like uh, for us, and then uh, uh, for actual translation engines, we uh, what we need to support is just three three functions. So initialization, when we basically load our model or Authenticate to cloud engine or whatever. Uh, then actual function function to translate the lines, and at that stage we make sure that the number of lines that come into the function is actually like suitable for the model. So if you say that like how much batch size must be no no bigger than like four lines, then we make sure like we make sure outside that no more than four lines come in at that stage. Uh, and another function to set language pairs, so it's uh, usually important for multilingual models that may translate between different language pairs. So again, uh, just like a model-specific way to set, set the language. Uh, and uh, by doing so, basically using this architecture allows us to use different engines. So we're not uh, limited to like, let's say only uh, transformer models or only cloud models or like our own APIs. We can easily create adapters to any model that we have. So we can create adapter for Azure that just sends a request to API. We can create adapter for our like local transformer model like Marian. We can use our local APIs as well if you want to like compare the engines with what we have like in house and so on. Uh, next problem was data sets. So again, when we want to test machine translation on what data set we want to test it. Uh, the story here is usually when the new models come in, there's, there's several uh, like common data sets from usually from workshop on machine translation from different years, uh, but they're very limited. So they're like English to German or English to Romanian, they left for Romanian for some reason. Uh, uh, so it, it's maybe good to like to present scientific results like here's the data set our model is better like how great we are uh, but not good when we want to evaluate the, the models between each other like on from different angles from uh, different domains and so on uh, luckily there's like resource for this already so people in opus uh, they create uh, a public storage of all, like, not all, but uh, most common uh, translation data sets, and they have very good APIs, so basically you're just saying, 
like I want this data set and uh, translation from English to Spanish. Then they give the, the, the data set to you and uh, these data sets are very big. So uh, what we do on our site, we just support it, like downloading this data set, extracting like, because they usually like big, like million of lines, extracting some test data from them randomly and so on. So in the end, uh, basically what we end up with, uh, we had our data sets when we have our uh, source data, our uh, reference target translation, and then we just add translation for different engines and compare them with each other. Uh, another problem that we try to solve is about metrics. So there is basically there's many mu there are multiple ways how you can properly translate the one sentence to another language. So when you have the reference sentence, it's a question like how we compare like what we had from uh, translation engine to what we have as a reference. Uh, so any metric that you have will be approximation. Uh, for, for most of the metrics, again, there's third party libraries, but they usually have some, some question like how to use them and so on. Uh, what we uh, did in the end, we uh, again uh, created pluggable framework when you can use different metrics. We, uh, we used uh, so several third party libraries to use like uh, six, I think six most common metrics. In the end, it turns out that in our use cases, we can just use blue. So the blue is uh, like most common metric for machine translation. But because we usually care about like huge difference in quality. If you like a, a different metrics are important if you like, want to improve the model like a little bit. Uh, yeah, so, so for, for metric again, we just created base class that you need to fill in. Just say like, do you need tokenization? Do you need uh, like source or uh, just target and reference? And uh, yeah, what your languages are. Uh, okay, so. And then for evaluation, basically what we did, we uh, created just three scripts, uh, three scripts. So to download data sets, translate them using different engines, and then evaluate the results. And everything is managed by uh, uh, Hydra configs. So what you do, uh, like, like if you want to, oops, sorry. If you want to just reproduce our result, you can just call the scripts without any parameters. If you want to do it on your own data, on your any other data set from Opus, you can just create the config that will say, like, this is the name of the data set from Opus. Uh, uh, like, I want 10 lines out of it without duplicates and with minimal length of string, like of 30 characters. And the script, uh, and then when you run your scripts, you just set that like data sets to download is my new quick quick evaluation set. And then you pass it on to the next scripts and everything will be done for you. Again, if you want to evaluate on your own data sets and that's the stuff that we do like in house because we, uh, in addition to public data sets, we have our own, uh, you just create your data set on your own, but by whatever means you have, and you just provide again the hider config that say, this is my data set, like name private data set, uh, this is the source file, this is the target file, uh, like number of lines, and that's it. And then you obviously doesn't need the first step now for, to download, and you just, for, for the script, you just say, it, like translate data set, this is like my private data set, and then evaluate it. Uh, again, with the engines, like if you want to support new engine, you create your like translation class that will be inherited by base translator class, uh, implement all the three functions like initialization, translation, and setting language, and then put it in config saying like, this is my class like called custom, uh, and it should be you need to put this name like in enumeration in inside the code. And this is some settings for, 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 for my uh, engine and let's go. And again, 
like just in the script, you just say that my translation engine. It's my private engine. Uh, okay, so the next piece is uh, basically evaluation that we did. Uh, so we choose several engines uh, to, to evaluate again for our, uh, like from our perspective, that was interesting for us. So first of all, we took two cloud engines, Azure and Google. Uh, then we used, uh, then we uh, evaluated uh, Marion MT. So Marion is a, a very good architecture for machine translation. It originally was written in C++. So it was very fast, it, it is very fast. Uh, then it, it was converted to like Hagen phase transformers. We actually use uh, Hagen phase implementation, but because the architecture is very good, that's uh, uh, one of the advantages of Marion is the model are very small. They look, uh, I don't know, I don't remember, like 300 megabytes, something like this for the model. Uh, another model is uh, NEMA. So NVIDIA have their own uh, uh, natural language processing suite with different models for different use cases like speech recognition, summarization, and so on. And one of them, like, uh, they have machine translation as well. And then we also tested uh, three models from uh, Facebook. So M2M100, M Bart 50 and uh, No Language le Left Behind is the latest models from Facebook that actually re was released last week. And many thanks to great contributors to Hagen Face who just supported it in a week. So I had a chance like to uh, tomorrow or yesterday to plug it in again to, to our engine and test it. Um, and yeah, we included multilingual models here. Basically for multilingual models, uh, usual use case is uh, like why Facebook is working on them. Uh, they care about low resource languages. So the languages that have low, uh, low amount of like parallel data that no nobody trains specifically like translation engine. Uh, in our use case, we uh, do evaluation from for translation from English to Spanish. It's like most common translation pair. So uh, we didn't expect much from this multilingual uh, engines, but it was uh, uh, we feel that it's important to test them anyway because when you go to other languages in your pipeline, it's much better to use one model instead of like the uh, difference. So if they prove, if they make proof like useful, it will be good to know. Uh, another piece was data sets. So again, as I said, for like uh, public evaluation, we just use public data sets from Optum or from Opus. Uh, one of them was actually in, in healthcare domain. So in me, it's a, uh, corpus of uh, documents from European medicine agency uh, translated to different languages and other was like some extract from Wikipedia, some TED talks, open subtitles, books, uh, and bar crawl and CC aligned. It's uh, aligned text from uh, web crawl. Uh, and for each data set, we try to extract around 5,000 five, uh, 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 Lines for, for, for each, it's like depends on the data set because some of them have a lot of, like, like for example, especially like open subtitles, they have a lot of duplications, they have a lot of uh, short lines, so it turns out smaller, but as the data sets, we use around like 5,000 lines, so pretty stable, let's say, for evaluation. But uh, the data sets itself are actually quite bigger, like much, much bigger, so like in million of lines. So you can use them, like if you want like bigger uh, evaluation. Uh, yeah, and the metrics, uh, so they're like <laughs> different of them. Uh, we mainly focused on blue, and I will show the graphs why, uh, because it turns out, at least in our use case, the metrics was were aligned between each other. Uh, two interesting one, uh, so the blue is traditional metric. I think, uh, yeah, we have here. Uh, so basically, it's a number between zero and one that measures similarity of uh, machine translated text to your reference translation, and it do 
this is uh, by calculating uh, overlap of word engrams between like your translation and uh, uh, the reference text plus some penalty if like the length of the text is different. Uh, so it's very traditional methods. method. It's actually correlate well with uh, uh, human evaluation. If you ask people like how well this translation is in terms of like uh, uh, quality, it's correlate well with uh, blue scores. Uh, other metrics like uh, TR, TRF, Rouge, uh, basically trying to do the same thing. So they try to com compare the, the like reference text and uh, uh, your translation by different metrics, by different overlaps. Uh, but uh, as two metrics, BERT and COMET, uh, it's like, let's say, new generation of metrics. When they, what they try to do is they use actual multilingual uh, models, uh, like in first, in first uh, model BERT and COMET, they use, I think, their own. Uh, and they just build sentence embedding between your like uh, reference translation and your translation and see how how close your sentence embeddings are and if they close it's, yeah it's a good translation and they fine tune the, the model specifically for this use case and again like we see more and more in research that people start moving from blue to like bear score and comment especially comment uh, okay so yeah, what left is results. Uh, so for general comparison, yeah, it's, I'm sorry, it's probably hard to read because it's a lot of data. Uh, but uh, what happens here is, uh, so this is different data sets. Um, and for each data set, uh, so the first column, first two columns is the cloud engines, Azure and Google, uh, then Next uh, three is open source engines, so Nima and Marian, and then the next three is uh, multilingual ones, so M M50, MBART50, M2M, and uh, NLLB. Uh, and I know it's hard to read, I'm sorry, but uh, basically if you look closely at these results, uh, main uh, conclusion for us was that uh, open source engines actually on par in terms of quality with uh, cloud solutions. So because if you like talk with people about what translation to use, people usually tend to say, oh no, let's just go to like Google Ez or Azure because it's like, they probably better. Turns out not always. And uh, like open source solution, I actually on par with them. Uh, so it was one of the important conclusions for us that we can actually use and implement uh, open source uh, models for an NMT inside our company instead of using uh, cloud. Uh, potentially, another piece was uh, around multilingual models. So if you can see, uh, so here's a comparison that when the first column is Marian that I put there for comparison. And then the next one is different versions of multilingual models, like big, small, uh, and so on. Uh, uh, so the first model from Facebook and Bart 50, it was like really bad. At least, again, I say, as I said, they have different use case, but for English to Spanish translations, they were really bad if you compare with Marian. Uh, but then they improve, so and M to M hundred was like a year ago, was released a year ago, and it's actually like have better quality. And then they released uh, like last week they released an LLB that actually on par with uh, uh, Marion on some data sets. Not all of them, but on some of them they're actually on par. So maybe in the future it will make sense to just use multilingual models for everyone. Another problem, but another problem is that Marion is like uh, 300 megabytes and uh, an LLB is five, five gigabytes. So, but, and it's obviously the same difference in speed. Uh, another uh, test that we ran is, was around grid search. Again, we want to make translation faster 
And for open source model, basically it's transformer model. So they have encoder, decoder, and for decoder they uh, usually do the beam search to generate uh, to generate the results. Uh, turns out that for all for all models, there's not much difference in quality if you just use grid search or uh, beam search with I think beam of four. Uh, so the models are almost the same. Like if you compare them, like so here each pair is like the model is is uh, greedy or beam search. Uh, again, was important conclusion for us because grid search are obviously like faster, like usually two times faster. So again, easy to use. Uh, yeah, and as I said about metrics, so this is different graph. Uh, so we have different models here on X axis or so sorry, different uh, uh, translation engines. And then each line is uh, different scores. So like blue score, Cherev, Bert, Comet, Rouge, GTR. And it, uh, as you see, if you just sort them by, let's say blue score. So from uh, like a smaller score to, to higher score, all other scores will will be s s s sorted as well. So, so there is no difference. So if one model is better than another, by, by, by one uh, score, they will it will be better than another by any other score. So again, in our use case, because we compare like different models uh, with uh, big difference in quality. Uh, if you uh, like care about one two blue points, you usually start looking in other metrics because then it will be important. And yeah, couple of words. Why we actually uh, doing this? If you uh, come, uh, like one of the reasons, if you compare the cost of translation, so if you want to translate one million characters, it's around three hundred pages. In Azure, it will be around ten dollars. Like in Google, twenty. In OS, fifteen. I don't know where you get these numbers, to be honest. Uh, but if you just implement the same open source engine that we saw that have the same quality and on Azure GPU machine, it will take around. I don't know, five, 10 minutes to translate all this data. And you just pay like 30 cents for this. So yeah, big, big win uh, if you're ready to support this. And yeah, all of this framework that I was talking about is actually open source. So you can go look like github.com uh, optum NMT and it will be there. So like if you have a need to evaluate machine translation engines for whatever reason, it's there, you can use it. And if you have questions, you can reach out to me or to Sahil here in the room. Uh, so, yeah. And yeah, I was, uh, people make me to put this here, <laughs> we're actually hiring. Uh, so and we have a lot of position open here in Dublin and uh, like across the world. If you're interested, you can reach out and we can talk. Uh, Thanks. Okay, thank you. We have about six minutes for questions. If anyone in the room would like to ask a question, please uh, come to the microphone. Uh, yeah, thank you for your talk. It was uh, really yeah. nice. Um, sure. You come to the conclusion that the open source models are about as good as the commercial ones, but in the graph you so see do see a slight difference. So, like how how, uh, how do you draw the conclusion that there? Yes. Yeah, so, uh, first of all, uh, like one of the conclusions was, as you see, like the quality is different between different data sets. So sometimes, like one engine can be like really better. It's actually a problem in machine translation because probably like. For example, like here, Parrot, uh, one, uh, Nima is much better, but it's probably because they were trained on it. Uh, because again, it's public data sets, so people use them. Uh, but uh, for our use case, we don't care much about, so for example, if you look, like, we look closely on like, this data set, Nima, so the difference between, let's say, like Google and uh, Marion is around two blue points. And in uh, 
like in real world it means that nobody notices the difference to be honest. Uh, again it's important for, for some application uh, but uh, if you're talking about let's say application when people just to translate stuff like you know when uh, when agent talk with customer and they want to 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 like communicate better they may use machine translation to give some some suggestion in other language nobody will notice the difference in the blue points so that's why I say that. again for our use case it's uh, almost the same and uh, another piece was that uh, we actually wanted uh, we want to fine tune the models. For our use case, it's also possible to do in cloud, but it's much, much more expensive. Uh, with open source, it's much easier and much cheaper to do. And then you actually see the big difference. Like, you know, okay. Thank you. Yeah. Hi, great talk. Thank you. Uh, can you tell me something more about the licensing of the open source models? Can you use them commercially? How does uh, it work? So it's, yeah, so it depends on the model, <laughs> in short. So, so basically, the models that we used, uh, the, I don't remember to, to be honest, license for all of them, but uh, uh, usually they allow commercial use if you like, say that you use them. <laughs> But uh, but it's important to, to to check because some of them are uh, actually released by non-commercial. So, for example, uh, as far as I remember, Facebook models like we included the some translation just to see like how well they uh, perform. Uh, but I'm not sure that we can use them in particular because they might probably non-commercial. No so it doesn't look like we have any remote questions either. So that ends the session. Once again, thank you, Anton, for the interesting talk. Thank you.